Hi everybody, it is Sunday. It is June 9, 2019. How is everybody doing? Wow, man, it's an incredible time to be living here on planet Earth. Oh, don't leave me the comment. It's not a planet. It's a plane. Oh, please. Sandfire, Yolo County wildfire grows to 2,200 acres. The last, and that was an hour and a half ago, the last research, it was at 1,800. So it has grown 600 acres in an hour and a half. I guess the winds, well, <laughs> an article that I read, they were saying that the wind gusts were going to die down this afternoon, I guess they didn't die down. It's 20% contained. 20% contained. The Yolo County Sand Fire. Um, so, we have been packing with no idea how bad this is. Helen, a resident who didn't even know that there was a mandatory evacuation until a sheriff deputy told them to leave. And then she said, this is obviously going to be the new norm. I saw a couple of news broadcasts and heard this guy talking about, well, this is the new norm. It is amazing how these authority figures say one particular thing and it catches on. It just, well, make America great again. Yes, we can. The new norm. It's the new norm. Strong winds fueled by dry heat. Look at these skies. Look at the chemtrailing taking place above this fire. Helen and Pete ended up having to evacuate with their six dogs. Saw a news broadcast and a woman who had to evacuate very quickly. She didn't know what was happening with her horses, but a neighbor told her that her horses were running down the driveway. Okay. Helen and Pete McClowski went through evacuations last year when they lost one of their farms in the devastating county fire, which burned over 90,000 acres. There is one road in, one road out. Highway 16. And earlier, I was on Google Maps, and I was looking at the evacuation zone and I thought, how did they evacuate here? Because they closed Highway 16 in between um, Gwinda and Rumsey, those two towns up in Yolo County. And I was searching for roads. I couldn't find any. So this resident says, if the casino had to evacuate, you can kiss off that end of the valley with the traffic. There's a casino up there. If you take a look on Google Maps, you'll see how rural is this part of Northern California. Highway 16 and the R. Buckle grade road and the county won't maintain the road anymore. Uh, these are the two exits. Highway 16 and R. Buckle grade road are the two exits and the county won't maintain that road anymore. This could be a death trap. Sound like paradise to you? Does to me. Well, they don't know if any structures have been destroyed yet. Uh, saw an article that PG&E is now going to be restoring the power. Though the last article I read takes them 24 hours to restore the power. That sounds really odd. It's the new norm because people believe their authority figures. 
and they won't look into. And I'm not saying that you know, every fire is caused by directed energy weapons. We don't know. Haven't looked at the evidence yet. You know, fires do start from campfires. Fires do start from people being stupid um, or irresponsible. But to say that it's the new norm, that is the climate change. That That's under the climate change umbrella. People believing climate change. And, you know, I'm going to show you some articles that I don't know about you guys, but I am, I'm just sickened at what this country has become and the American people on the whole, which means not every American, but yeah, the most, most of them, they just won't get off the line. And nothing, nothing makes me more sick than hearing lies over and over and over again. They carry the day. I, yeah, here, Mount Fire, Mountain Fire flares to more than 7,000 acres north of Phoenix. A fire is burning on National Forest land north of Phoenix, and authorities believe the blaze was man-made. Yep, human-caused. Why do they believe that? Do they give you a reason? Well, day use areas and campgrounds, uh, Horseshoe and Bartlett lakes have been closed and people that were already in those areas have been escorted out, but they don't give you any reason why they think it's man-made. Don't they have to investigate before they just throw out their presumptions? I guess not. Because everything is due to that individual human being causing destruction. We're not going to look at the military. We're not going to look at directed energy weapons. We're not going to look at what corporations are doing. We're going to blame it on the individual in the aggregate who yeah, I believe all of that, these fires in the national parks and national forests, uh, it's going to come down to no more human beings because you start fires. Well, that's one, one method to exclude humans from certain areas of the country. Here, this was Dallas. And this was, either it happened today or yesterday. I think it was today. God dang, dude. So, earlier I got an email from a subscriber who lives in the Dallas area and he said that a storm blew in and out and afterwards it was really nice cool and dry and he also said the trees that he has been looking at have no fungus Dallas your trees are healthy that sounds like well I, I, I was really shocked to hear that subscriber say the trees are doing well. No fungus. So I'd like to hear from more Dallas subscribers because, well, it seems that the trees then, I guess, are only doing well in Dallas. Everywhere else, they're dying. But I do want to bring up a site. Hang on. This was sent along to me by a subscriber, and all of the subscribers who have sent along any of these articles. I, I want to thank you for doing that. Um, I want to thank my subscriber who lives in Texas for sending this along. It is the um, National Interagency Coordination Center and here are 
the predictions for wildfire. Here's June. And lo and behold, you've got Arizona. And the red is above normal. The green is below normal. Well, I would think it has something to do with the massive amounts of rain, snow melt, flooding. But the red area, pretty much all of South Carolina, except for upstate, three quarters of Georgia, uh, the Jacksonville area, the Panhandle, Florida, Washington, Northwest Washington, Oregon, um, now close to half, and yep, California, and Hawaii, all of Hawaii. That's June. And July, still the same, except North Carolina, add North Carolina, um, and Idaho, and Montana, a little bit in this corner. Yeah, throw in more in Arizona, Phoenix area, but it seems you've got a fire just north of Phoenix going already. Um, Nevada, this area, and Utah, southwest and central Utah. But California, Northern California, I'm afraid you're staying red. Now, this is August, and it includes all of Northern California. And just this stretch right on down to Southern California. A lot of California. And I'm afraid that you're going to be seeing a lot of wildfires. I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong. I want to be wrong. I'll gladly admit I am wrong. But September, pretty much all of Oregon. And I've received comments from subscribers in Oregon who have said they're afraid they're going to be hit with a lot of wildfires this year. Well, you may very well be. So, uh, I will link below to everything, but there's another fire in Arizona. Clintswell, cold water fire burns over 5,800 acres. Broke out May 30, has now spread over 5,800 acres in a 17,900 planning area, the result of a lightning strike. Yeah, I see this, and I, all of wildlife is really, well, big, big, big toll. What is this? This is something that was sent to me by a subscriber that I do want to thank. Uh, James, I don't know, Adelit, Adelit. He is the chief meteorologist in Texas, in Austin, and he has a very interesting tweet. Look at that. Wow. That's called a supercell. And look at that lightning. Um, this was north of Winona, Kansas. Supercell. Yeah, a whole lot of flash flooding has also occurred. This is, well, a very interesting thing. Dust devil that spun up in the back lot of American Trailer Rentals in Lakeland, Florida. Huh. Well, it seems that there was quite a bit of wind right smack there in that area. Well, they can do that with a le um, uh, electromagnetic frequencies. Now, where is that tweet? Oh, look at that person running through the flood. Here it is. 
Ah, you want to know what James said about this, these circles developing here on radar? These circles on radar are caused by bats, millions of bats leaving their cave at sunset. Yes, expanding circles. Those are bats, millions of bats in several different areas. They get, I, I guess they have caves in a lot of different areas, and millions of bats. Do you know that bats are, well, are they uh, an endangered species at this point? Yeah, we have a real decline in bats, a real decline in insects. So the last video that I showed, another chief meteorologist claiming that what we were seeing on radar out of, was it California? They were ladybugs. And then, of course, we had the Weather Channel meteorologist claiming that all of the blue that we see, all of that blue that we see on radar, he was explaining all of this blue are insects and birds. Insects and birds. And we only see that blue early in the morning. And my fabulous computer is sticking. I can't move my cur- oh, I can. Okay. So, let's see. Yeah. You see this blue? Well, I guess, I don't know, is it bats? Or, well, it's not early morning, it's 8.37 p.m. Uh, but the Weather Channel meteorologist was claiming that you only see this blue early morning and it's because radar is picking up birds and insects. Well, it's 8.37 p.m. on the East Coast and this has been here all day. These blips of storms right here all day hasn't moved just from the south coast to right on into Canada, this storm, all day long, hasn't moved. Now this storm here, you've had this storm, which was coming from Oklahoma into the Dallas area, and I guess that's still this storm. It hasn't moved very far at all, huh? The idiocy with which life has become from these people that are regarded as, like, experts. Bats, millions coming out of their cave at sunset, which means that we should be seeing this well, at sunset every night, right? One dead, several injured after crane collapses over apartment during Dallas storms. Okay. So, here are some pictures. I mean, the storm? must have been pretty intense to dump a crane. Glass blown in and shattered windows in Dallas. Uh, but I don't think that's from the crane. This is from the crane. This is from the crane. What are, what are we, well, what we are living is you are to have no security ever again, Americans. No security. Another subscriber sent me these articles with planes just falling out of the sky. 
um, small planes, and two happen this weekend. The cause? Not known. Crane falls into an apartment building. Well, if you know that document, the Dr. Lawrence Dunnigan, who transcribed his recollections of a lecture that he attended in 1969, Dr. Day, who said, you will not record this talk. You will not have pen, pencil, paper to take notes. And he rattled off what would be occurring over the decades in our country. He was a New World Order insider. One of the things he rattled off was no security. Trains would be falling off tracks. Planes will be falling down, collapsing from the sky. Cranes will fall into buildings, apartment buildings, from a storm. Oh, and fires will break out and guests will be told to evacuate to shelter in place at Six Flags Magic Mountain as 50-acre brush fire burns nearby. Um, sky fire, that's what it's called. Sky fire in the Santa Clarita area, less than a mile east of the amusement park Los Angeles County Fire Department officials said the fast-moving fire was at three acres when firefighters responded and it spread to burn about 50 acres with 20% containment by 3.20 p.m. About 24 are, hours since heavy no rain pounded security. Campbell What's County, that? flooding streets, yards, and buildings, About leaving behind damage like this Friday night. night. Tonight, we're hearing stories from those impacted now picking up the pieces. New at 11, six on your side reporter Elizabeth Kubel going back to some of the hardest hit areas today. A sight that is hard to believe. Friday night storms wreaking havoc on this Campbell County home. We've lived here t over 20 years, you know, and uh, never nothing like this. I mean, just lost everything we had. This couple's house carried off its foundation Friday night. The damage, visible and extensive. We had an 07 Ford Mustang destroyed, uh, side by side destroyed, boat destroyed. I had a work truck with, you know, all my tools and stuff on it destroyed, Cadillac destroyed. When I pulled in and seen it, I broke down. I mean, ain't nothing you can say. I mean, you're so, so much in shock. Just to give you some perspective, their house used to sit right here, shifting and flipping about 300 feet here behind us. Those screen doors that you're looking at right now, they used to face a different direction, facing this way toward the road. The they used to face a different direction, facing this way toward the road. That's one hell of a flash flood, don't you think? This was uh, in Tennessee. Oh, National Park quietly removes climate change warning after years of heavy snow? What? Um, why did you quietly remove that, National Park Service? The National Park Service for the Glacier National Park has quietly removed a sign saying that the glaciers would disappear in 2020 due to climate change. Oh, well, they quietly removed that because, well, snowfall was above average in recent years, and it kind of upended that computer model projection. That's a truck right there. It's but submerged. this flash flooding is due to Please. damage.
North Carolina. North Carolina. Flash flooding. Wow. Ben, this is a prime example Flash of why change. looks can be deceiving Rain when it comes to about. rainfall on the roadway. Take a look here. The water doesn't look too bad, but down there, the car is almost underwater. It's a rushing river. Water almost up to the roof. Uh, the driver thought it would be safe to cross the bridge, but it only takes a few inches for things to turn dangerous. Just before 10 this morning on Huffine Farm Road in Gibsonville, a woman and her dog were pulled to safety. The water on on this road is from Buffalo Creek, which was starting to crest. At that point, with the force of the water, it slammed her up against the guardrail. You can only imagine how scary it must have been as they watched the water levels rise. Scuba teams, swift water teams, and other emergency personnel, including firefighters, rescued the woman and her dog. They were. Water teams and other emergency personnel, including firefighters, rescued the woman and her dog. And she's okay, but she got a ticket. She was given a ticket, North Carolina. People aren't questioning what's happening here. They're not questioning this kind of flooding that's happening. The River Valley so families have states lost states everything as a result of record time. flooding in the area. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Chelsea Helms. For one local woman, it's the second natural disaster she's lived through. Fox 24's and Kirka Zuka spoke to this woman as well as a renter on what's next for them. Here we are again in another flood. This recent historic flooding in Fort Smith isn't new to resident Sheila Clayton. I have been in one before. I've been in Katrina. She says Hurricane Katrina was worse because she was stranded in her home for several days. Even so, she never expected to go through something like this again. In fact, she moved to the natural state from New Orleans to avoid it. Arkansas, I just, I just didn't think that, you know, they have stuff like this happen up here. Clayton's neighbor, Laurel Shuttleworth, says this is the first flood she's been through. She says when she first heard there would be historic high waters, she didn't think much of it since a tornado had touched down a block away the week before. I kind of made the joke um, to my spouse. I was like, you know, we need an adventure. And it's, it's like, I wish I would have never said that. Now, the damage in Shuttleworth's townhome is so bad, she got something she never even expected, sunflowers growing out of the carpet. This result of sea is being blown all over the room and fed with the flood water. The smell was terrible. Uh, you know, a lot of people didn't think it was going to be that bad. She had renter's insurance, but when she called about it, she found out it didn't help in this situation. If you, like, the pipe burst in your neighbor's house and you had to relocate or something along those lines, then it would actually cover your moving expenses. Shuttleworth says she's currently living with her parents and Clayton is living out of her car, trying to keep her spirits high. I'm going through a lot. I'm trying to hold up and be strong, you know, because they have other people that's worried about me. In Fort Smith, in Kirikazuka. Because they have other people that's worried about me. She's living in her car. Residents of a Montreal suburb hit hard by what spring flooding are demanding the province Montreal? set up help for Residents all of them. Of Hundreds of homes were damaged when a dike broke back in April, leading to forced evacuations and massive flooding. Now residents say the responsibility should fall on the province. CBC's Matt Damore reports. Michaela Hardy's room is in the basement of her family home along with two of her siblings. When the dike breached in saint marc sur le lac in April, the water came in mere minutes. I was panicked. It was like everyone was in a frenzy. It was chaos my only instinct was, okay, I have to protect the kids, I have to get them together, I have to assemble them, we have to get in the car, we have to go. The Hardy home was one of 2,500 houses in the town damaged by flooding. Now that the waters have receded, residents are worried about what's next. On the night that we got flooded, now that the waters All my receded, funds for college, the for university, they're gone. They have to go to the mortgage, they have to go for renovations, if we even choose to stay. Hardy and other residents marched to the temporary public security mortgage, office. Some went in to speak with government officials. Because the flooding was caused by a dike failure, they want full compensation for repairs. Those officials. 
Because the flooding was caused by a dike failure, they want full compensation for repairs. Those okay, so Americans, you guys in your communities where those levees are failing, where the drainage ain't working like it used to work, march down to your local government and demand. A flood of frustration tonight for to a North Texas family after cleaning up water yeah. damage from storms earlier last a week. They are back to square one tonight. Our Aaron Jones reports from, from that area just outside of Kaufman, where that family says they feel like they are simply tonight. out of options. Oh, gosh. She's wading through hip deep water, documenting the devastation for her daughter while her husband holds a gun to protect them from snakes. This is the harm. The harm. Everything that's not tied down is floating. In one week, Shannon Hall's property has seen two rounds of rain. The first came Thursday. She says it brought about an inch of water into her home, but by Friday, a lot of it had dried out. Shannon and her family left for a Mother's Day cruise. Her parents watching over the house. We had high hopes if it just didn't rain anymore, they could keep it. But Saturday, more rain came for hours, and now they say this home is unlivable. They've worked so hard to, to build it themselves. They're residents, and the daughter has a gym in there that's 50 by 50. And all these other children that come here to to tumble, they cannot be in this mess. The family. And all these other children that come here to to tumble, they cannot be in this mess. The fam okay. Um, I'm sorry. That's a May 12, 2019 video. As I was watching it, I was, I've seen this before. Oh, because I've posted it before. Well, guess what? This is what we have been living even before May, April, I mean, the flooding has been phenomenal. And yes, it is taking a flood of frustration tonight for a North Texas family after a whole lot of people. A flood of frustration tonight for a North Texas family after. And why do I have that repeated? I don't know. I'm losing it. I'm very sorry. Very sorry. Okay, so, uh, let's just open this up. We'll do this quickly. Do you see this? I saw this last night. I was so sorry that I actually just went through some of my sites before going to bed. And I saw this. You know, I even donated to NPR. This makes me sick. We all owe Al Gore an apology. More people see climate change in record flooding. That is a lie. Because I just saw a poll taken. And, well, there are less people who believe in climate change than... than don't. Is that right? Yeah. We owe Al Gore an apology. A disgusting, despicable display of a human being with a question mark. The lies, I'm I, look guys, I can't, I don't know, I don't belong here. I just don't belong here. United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change scientist blows whistle on lies about climate, sea level. He sat on the panel. He's not the only one. Many scientists who co-authored IPCC assessments have come out and said the data is just a joke. A joke. Top scientists slam and ridicule 
United Nations IPCC climate report, but none of these scientists will you ever see on mainstream media. So do we really owe Al Gore an apology? NPR? Really? You are just as disgusting and despicable because you're lying. And these mainstream media journalists, they know full well that there are far more scientists who dispute this man-made climate change hysteria that is continually promoted on mainstream media. They're lying. They're lying. And you read these articles and you'll see how many scientists have trashed the so-called science coming out of the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Now why do I sound, well, a bit passionate or frustrated or passionate and or frustrated? Because this has been going on for decades. It has been going on and on and on. Every assessment that comes out of the IPCC has been trashed by scientists. Even scientists who have sat on the panel. Trashed by climatologists. Cla uh, trashed by meteorologists, trashed by Nobel laureates, and this was years ago. It's far more than 31,000 scientists say there is no convincing science uh, evidence that man is causing climate change. 31,000. And the IPCC makes up about a hundred. But that's the consensus. Climate change, panic scenarios, killing scientific debate, the dark story behind global warming. Now, do we need mainstream media reporters to read this? No, because they know it. They know that it's a lie. They know it. What we need them to do is stop lying. Climate of fear, global warming alarmists, intimidate dissenting scientists into silence. And yes, even the national assessment coming out of the executive branch. Trump holding on to Obama scientists. The national climate assessment comes out during the Trump years. And it's even more hysterical than the IPCC's assessment. This is what we're living. No more security. And pure trash.